Welcome to Backstory, the musical journey of Leon and Malia. Award-winning duo Leon and Malia has been part of Hawaii's music scene for over 40 years, composing and performing a wide range of music in Hawaii and around the world. In this special series, we'll be hearing the fascinating backstories behind their amazing journeys in music from Waikiki to the London Symphony. From the momentous triumphs of Hokulea to the Hawaiian cultural renaissance. Aloha, aloha mai kako. I'm Kimo Kahoano. It's an honor to be here with you, welcoming you to Backstory, the musical journey of Leon and Malia. Aloha, I'm Leon. And I'm Malia. We welcome you to this episode of Backstory. So this particular episode, we're going to be talking about a project called Keiki Calabash. And this was a video project. Yes. We started out first, of course, with uh, the, the long play albums uh, for children. And then we switched to cassette tapes. Mm. Uh, then, of course, the, the VHS tapes came along. So we, we switched to that and started to produce in video. So this was our first project in video. Right, Keiki Calabash. Keiki Calabash. Right, right. Keiki Calabash is full of really exciting songs that um, have gone through a lot of generations, haven't right. they? Right. Initially, most of these songs started out in previous projects, which were just uh, recordings, like Mokulana which and Ho'olako, Hawaii. Yeah, which uh -huh. they will hear about on the other right. episodes. Right, on, ep on other episodes, right. So, um, but this particular uh, recording has a number of songs that have become pretty much iconic, uh, mm -hmm. because the recordings became very famous or very popular in schools and throughout, uh, well, all around the world, but particularly with young children. Because well, they, a lot of the schools children. use the songs as their theme song. Right, yes, so right. several songs, uh, several schools adopted, for instance, this Ohana song uh -huh. as their theme song for, for the year, or actually for several years. Um, and the entire school sang these songs at assemblies right. and at gatherings and things like that. Well, the Ohana song is one of our most important and most exciting songs. Why don't you tell them how it came about, because it's been used in um, Aloha festivals and everything mm -hmm. else. So the, yes, but, yeah. The Ohana song is also known as We Are Family, um, because of the repetitious part of We Are Family, Family. A very special kind of people. Kind of people. Yeah, lovely. Right. right. Um, anyway, but this started out in 1987, actually. Um, as a uh, theme song written for the Hawaii Children's Museum that was at that time being planned and mm -hmm. I was helping with that project um, and well, there were three words that we used as the theme for, for this children's museum Ohana, Lokahi, and Aloha and so we decided that it needed a song and right. so I wrote a song um, and uh, it was a pretty interesting uh, idea because what we intended to do was to have uh, the word ohana uh, or lo and lokahi and aloha actually um, uh, voiced in whatever language that we were referring to. Well, like we were Filipino. looking at the different cultures right. and wanting to do um, the, the name for family in their culture and whatnot. So yeah, we were in their looking language. at maybe right. about five different versions. Uh -huh. Right, but so, so we wrote the song actually in order to be used uh, so that different uh, cultural references were, were used, uh, right. were made. But it came down to just um, Hawaiian when yes. we used the three words. Right, when, when we later really got the, the song together. So um, there's some other interesting sidelights about that particular song, but we, that, we can save that for another time as well. We could, we could. But when we recorded Ohana's song, that was a really exciting thing right. because we were out in Waiholi Valley with um, Waiholi Elementary School on their May Day. Right. <laughs> uh, Waiholi Elementary School had taken a special interest to our music, uh, actually going back to the Mokulana project. Yes, it did. And so when the, uh, we decided we we're going to do this uh, new Keiki Calabash project, uh, we, we were invited to come to Waiholi uh, to participate participate in their May Day program. So we did two songs with them at the May Day program, and mm -hmm. this was one of them, the Ohana song. 
A right. um, little bit of a sidelight. Uh, on the day that we were going to record at, um, uh, or to tape this song at Waiaholi Elementary School, uh, earlier that morning we had gotten a phone call from uh, a couple, and uh, the, <laughs> the husband's name was Paul, uh, from Peter, Paul, and Mary. And they were visiting in town, and so we said, why don't you come on out and join <laughs> us for the shoot? So they did. They drove out to Waiaholi and found the place and, and actually were a part of the audience uh, watching this uh, videotaping right, right. of the shoot. So Peter, Paul, and, and Mary are sort of part of this as well. A part of this as well, that's true. And you know, when we first started out, um, it, the song kind of went through, we are family, family, very special kind of people, family. But it wasn't until we got to Ka'a'ava Elementary School and we were doing a, a um, school performance there one time. And all of a sudden, when we sang, we are family, all 300 kids went and clapped. And we thought, we haven't put a clap in this song. <laughs> and so we went back in the studio. And now when you hear the song, you will hear, we are family, clap, clap, family. And that's how thousands and thousands of kids have learned it all over the state and all over the world. So anyway, that was just a kind of a neat thing. And thank you, Ka'a'ava Elementary, long ago. So why don't we roll the clip and okay. we'll kind of see what that's like. All right. Let's talk about the song Pueo. Right, the Pueo, of course, is the Hawaiian owl. And this particular uh, uh, creature is very spiritual. And so we wanted to write a song that was sort of mysterious and, and spiritual and, and sort of uh, uplifting so that uh, children would get a really great feeling from this song. Um, and what you'll see in the video is the, the Pueo in flight. And yes. much the, the flight uh, footage of the Pueo was taken in Makawao by our friend Don Mapes, who was also uh, the uh, director of this particular uh, Keiki Calabash uh, video. Yes, and, um, beautiful. So, but the Pueo loves to fly uh, along you know, during the daytime as well as in the evening time, but mostly during the daytime you'll see it. And on the plains of Eva, for instance, uh, here on the island of Oahu, uh, there are, there's a move uh, afoot to try to save the habitat of the Pu'el. And it's very important because uh, they're losing much of the habitat uh, due to yeah. housing developments and, right. and other types of intrusion on, on their hunting grounds and, and uh, their way, where they nest. So uh, this particular song we wrote and, and we were just really thrilled with uh, working with young children on this. 
And you want to tell about the, the hula on this? Yes, yes, it, it was fabulous. Um, we had um, uh, some uh, children from, I think it was uh, Waiau uh, Immersion, Hawaiian Immersion School, and uh, they came to join us at Napuanani Park, right here in the Aiea area. And um, they were very, what would you say, freestyle in the way that they, they performed the pueo. Right. They, they flew well, with the we, pueo and it was beautiful. The, their teacher had instructed them because they, they, they of course, knew how to hula. They had, they had regular, um, the, you know, the, the tools to, to do the movements. Mm -hmm. But the teacher told them, you know, just flow with the song and just do what you think uh, you ought to. And so th that's what appeared on our video. Right. It's really quite beautiful. And the interesting thing about Pueo and a couple of other songs that we've written um, is that because of this kind of mysterious um, spiritual level of Uplift. the up, yeah. uplifting part of the, of the songs, uh, it actually appeals quite a bit to very young children. We're talking about one, <laughs> one and a half year old children. And this becomes their favorite song of the entire KP yes. Calabash yes. video. Right. And uh, our, we, we, our parents tell us that, you know, the, the children are intrigued by this song. Yes, and some so. of the schools have adopted that as mm -hmm. their school song as well. Yes. So it, it's, it's fabulous. See what you think. Here's Pueo. So that was the beautiful song, Pueo. Uh, now, on, on that same Keiki Calabash uh, video, <laughs> we have another song that, that we really are, uh, you know, it's one of our favorite songs. And it's a favorite song because it about, it's about a, a very favorite object. And I shouldn't be call it an object, it's actually an, a being, an entity. And that's the sailing canoe, Hokulea. We've had a long history with Hokulea. We started yes, we uh, working with her. Uh, when she was being built, and then were there at the uh, launch and the preparations for the voyage and things like that. 1976. And in 1975, the launch. Well, much of the preparation was being done at Kualoa uh, Park yes. because Hokulea had been launched there, and, and, and at Kualoa they were experimenting with different types of canoe foods and, and how to preserve the foods as our ancestors would have to travel over these long distances. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a lot of experimenting going on with uh, ulu and with uh, bananas. Well, the, bana and, the dried bananas. I mean, right. nowadays you can go get dried bananas everywhere. But in those days, they were figuring out how to do it properly and uh, how, how it would have been done. How our ancestors would have done yes. it. Right. And uh, so uh, anyway, we worked with the Hokulea project and, of course, followed it during its tri sea trials and its sailing around the islands. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we were very much involved with Hokulea. Way back and, then. And as a result, we, the crew used to come and see us uh, performing. We were performing at that time at Territorial Tavern in downtown Honolulu <laughs> on Bishop Street. And uh, so after hours, the crew would come in and sit around. And, and after a while, 
the National Geographic film crew came in with them also because they were involved with the project. And so we got to be friends with them, and eventually uh, we were asked to write mm -hmm. the soundtrack for the Voyage of the Hokulea, the, the documentary film that was done by National Geographic, uh, which was released, uh, well, it was filmed up through 1976 with the voyage to right. Tahiti, and mm -hmm. then it was released in 1977. Right. So uh, we but wrote the soundtrack. We did write the soundtrack, and it was, the Hokulea originally was on that. However, the song Hokulea that we now have on Keiki Calabash is a different song, and it was written specifically for children to learn about the iconic canoe. Right. And so and it was actually written for the year of the Hawaiian. Oh, 1987 that's true. Um, was the year of the Hawaiian. Actually, incidentally, this year, uh, well, 2018, is the year of the Hawaiian. Oh, again. really? Yes. But, uh, <laughs> I wish but we back knew then, more about it. Back then, we, um, uh, we, we looked around at the year of the Hawaiian and noticed that there wasn't anything for children. True. And so we decided to uh, record some songs and write some songs for children. So we took Hokulea, the old, old Hokulea, we laid that aside and we decided we'd write a new song for children. Yes. And this one has actually become much more popular because it's sung in more schools. And so, um, this is our song, Hokulea. <laughs> Hokulea, and we were performing that at the time with Waiholi Elementary School, and it wasn't it wonderful how they built their their little canoe and they sailed it around the right. the um, uh, yard there yeah, out yeah, in the field with the fabric, um, fabric creating the waves. With the waves, and they they were mm -hmm. very creative. And schools since then, we have seen fabulous interpretations of this song. But speaking well, of the canoe foods, right? We, we talked get about canoe that. foods and uh, uh, the preparation for the voyage of the Hokulea. Well, of course, when the, our our ancestors came to these islands, they brought their own food along, and so these type, various types of food uh, were what what are now called canoe foods, and they were vital foods uh, in order for our people to survive mm -hmm. wherever they went and settled. Like like the kalo, the taro. Right. And the I like the maya. Maya, banana, banana, right. And of course the uala, the sweet potato. Oh, yes. And the uh, ulu. Uh -huh. Of course it took a little bit longer to propagate the ulu, but uh, that became very, very uh, essential to our people's health. And the main thing about these canoe foods is that they are healthy foods. They are foods that sustained our people for centuries and centuries. And uh, there are foods that actually um, keep, uh, can keep people healthy today if those are the foods we eat. Um, just recently, or not recently, maybe 30 years ago about, <laughs> um, there was an experiment done in YNI and, um, in which uh, people suffering from serious uh, 20th century type diseases like uh, diabetes and heart problems yes. and things like that, particularly Hawaiians, uh, were put on a diet of their original foods, these canoe foods. And, and lo and behold, they actually recovered and they got better, meaning that if these canoe foods were to be uh, used more uh, readily and more openly and, and more uh, frequently mm -hmm. in our diets, we actually would get a lot better health. I guess so. Mm -hmm. And uh, to do this song, um, Jeff Gear. 
uh, who's wonderful here in Hawaii, storyteller, storyteller puppeteer. and puppeteer, um, made all the puppets for the foods. And so we used the puppets. We were out at, I think, Rapoon Farms mm -hmm. um, in the fields there and um, in somebody's backyard with the ulu tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was fabulous. Look and see how you think this, this. Oh, wait, tell them about the voices on this. We have voices on oh, the puppets. Oh, yes, right. The, the puppets, each of the puppets uh, represents a different food uh, like or a different plant. And, um, and the voices were voiced by a friend of ours whose name is Billy Sage, who is a mm -hmm. master at, at voices. And he can, he can do all kinds of voices. This is a song called Ono Stuff. I call all the taro, I am the staff of life. I give you poi, I'm no kaoi, I'm call all the taro, yum yum. <laughs> I'm Maya, the banana. I'm tasty and slender. From me comes potassium. I'm my other banana, the top banana. <laughs> The red fruit, I also can make poi. I'm rich, you see, in vitamin C. I'm Ulu, the bread fruit for oh, Chinese. Next song we want to talk to you about is this great song about this tiny fish with a long name. Take it from there, Lena. Okay, and that fish is Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua. Of course, it's a very famous word uh, used in songs. Uh, because it's such a curious word, and uh, so anyway, it's a very musical word as well. Uh, mm -hmm. At that time, the state of Hawaii was going through kind of a, a search for the state fish. <laughs> and so the legislature was debating which fish they should use as True. the state fish. Uh, and so at that time, um, uh, you know, humu, humu was up and several other fish were being mm -hmm. considered. Um, it was also at 1987-88, somewhere around there, when Governor Waihe'e, or John Waihe'e, was elected the governor. Yes. And so we thought, okay, with this sort of political <laughs> debate going on uh, with the, the choosing of the state fish, uh, so that um, Billy Sage and we decided we would vocalize, or B Billy would vocalize the fish uh, with the voice of Governor, Governor Waihe. Waihe. <laughs> and so it was, and we had to, we asked him permission for it, of course, uh, in order to do so. And it was hilarious because if you listen to this, this song, it really sounds like Governor Waihe singing the song yeah. of being the voice of the humu. And um, we, there was a, an event uh, that, that was held with the governor's staff and other members of the administration um, up at the Bishop Museum shortly after uh, he had taken office. And uh, so at this party, uh, we sang this song, uh, Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. <laughs> and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the head of the uh, Waikiki Aquarium had was. actually had uh, a Humu Humu suit built. <laughs> and so he was in this suit dancing around on the stage with the song Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. And of course, this is a favorite among lots of kids around and, the world. And well, also around the world, too. Mm -hmm. Because then they can finally learn to say a Hawaiian word. A, real a long, long one. one. <laughs> All right, let's watch. It's not hard to learn to do it while we sing and play. This great big name is easy if you follow what I say. Just say humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apua'a, apua'a, humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apua'a, apua'a. Oh, that's beautiful. Everybody swim! 
Notch is a humpback whale. And one of the uh, interesting things about uh, humpback whales is that they are, they are singers. They actually, there's something called whale song, and they, they sing these songs. Um, and they're one of only two species of whales that actually sing songs like, like this. And the songs, uh, we know they are songs because they're actually repeated year after year. But then they have uh, slight variations, variations little changes, right. maybe a one note held a little longer at different times. But in the recordings that have been done by scientists over the years, they identify that these are actually songs. Uh, right, mm -hmm. right. And uh, Nachi is important because there's a particular whale that would swim all the way from Alaska to Hawaii every summer. And well, all the whales do. No, no, I know, but this particular whale, uh -huh. whose name is Nachi, is very well known by divers off of Maui. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because somewhere along this, this swim, um, uh, a shark or some other fish took a bite out of Nachi's dorsal fin. So when the divers see Nachi year after year, they know who it is. Right. And if you look at our video, um, you'll see that there is this, Nachi is in the video. It you'll is. see when, when he breaches, that right. there is not breaches, but when he actually surfaces, um, then you'll see the dorsal fin yep. has a so notch. So we have live whale footage in this one as well. We try to combine, when we can, puppets and live footage. Mm -hmm. So here we go with Nachi. <laughs> Majestic brother of the deep, swimming far across the wide open sea, come to me, come to me. Nachi, Nachi, come on home again. That was about Nachi the Whale, and this episode was all about the Keiki Calabash video. So uh, we want to invite you to join us for more of Leon and Malia backstory in the future. So until we see you again, from Leon and Malia, aloha. aloha.